Hey guys, it's Reenactment Day here, and this is going to be episode 4 of GI Reenacting 101. And as you see, we have some of the headwear that could be worn through the war. So to start off, I'm going to apologize if the audio quality is terrible and echoey, because I'm in a room with hardwood floors instead of a room with a carpet. And if you hear barking in the background, that's my dog, so just kind of ignore that. So, let us jump into the headwear. Alright, let's start off with the basic garrison cap. Now you can see right here we have two styles of garrison cap. We have the PX version and the standard issue. The standard issue means everybody was issued this kind of cap. And the PX means this was pretty much if you bought it. And most soldiers did because they thought it looked better. So, and then also later... We switched to this cap, I think, post World War II. So, you can see the, some of the differences between the cap. You see it is more pointed on both ends, and this is more rounded. I mean, that's pretty much one of the only differences, and also when you wear this cap, it's just a solid thing, solid top. And when you wear this cap, you can see there's kind of a split in the middle. So... That's pretty much the only difference is the internal liner is just about the same. But this one is the one that I use. So that's why I put the, of course, number one, the blue piping for infantry. And the, my unit pin. You would have one pin on this and two pins on your dress uniform. So, two caps. Pretty much the same thing, not too big of a deal. I'll show you what they look like. On a soldier you know I'll put them on so at the end of the video so that's that move these a bit out of the way next keeping along the line of dress cap we have this uh, like the dress cap this was for when they're not overseas these are for when they're overseas so you can go they can fold this one they're not really foldable you can they're a lot they're a lot easier to transport than the uh, campaign hat, but still, soldiers would wear this overseas. And some did actually get this cap overseas. So, you can see, nice pin on the inside. Nice aligner. A lot nicer than the garrison cap. Got this little identification tag. Inside, you just got a metal band that runs around the brim of the hat to keep its shape and nice brown leather I heard post or pre-war they had black leather then they switched to brown during the war and post war they switched back to black so this is a World War II era cap it's a very nice cap nice brass buckles and nothing too fancy about this cap I will show you well it's a fancy cap but I will show you it again on a dress uniform later in the video. And now we will go on to the basic M1 helmet. Now, this isn't going to be a long, this isn't going to be as long as a video, but I'll probably find more to talk about about these helmets and just headwear in general. So, the headwear. This is the M1 steel pot helmet. This is an early war version. Because it has the fixed bales. You can see it has an internal liner, suspension liner. All adjustable pretty much perfectly to your head. Got the nape strap right here. And the sweatband is well used now. And a nice fiberglass liner. Now if I pop this, this uh, band off. And pull the helmet out. Or well, the helmet liner. Gotta just wiggle it out sometimes. You see, helmet shell and helmet liner are two separate pieces. The steel, the steel outer shell and the internal fiberglass liner. They did this so if a part broke, you could just... Let's just say the liner broke in your helmet. Where in other countries, you'd probably have to send it in, get a new liner, and get a new helmet. In this one, you just chuck this away. And you put a new one in. 
because these helmets were one size fits all instead of like the German helmets where they had different helmet sizes per for soldiers. So very nice liner made by Firestone. You see leather chin strap. These aren't actually a chin strap. These are this is a uh, so it can hold it to the helmet better, but they were also worn as chin straps during like parades and stuff like that. So very nice, very nice green color. Now we move on to the shell. As you can see, these bales are just welded on there and they do not swivel. They were later swapped to swivel bales because these tended to snap off and the other ones would just swivel. You see front seam, how you can tell a post-war helmet or at least a very late war helmet is it would have a rear seam and pretty much the best way to tell if your helmet is post-war or during World War II if the seams up here then it's World War II but it's back if it's back here it's highly likely it's not but near the end of World War II there were some rear seam helmets so you should check the number that's right here so you can see nice canvas chin strap most soldiers didn't wear this chin strap because there's a rumor going around that if they wore the chin strap and an, ex and an explosion happened nearby, it would take your head with you when the helmet came flying off. So, that is why they did not wear their chin strap alone. You see it up back like this. Another reason they didn't wear their chin strap is if you got into hand to hand combat, a uh, German could grab your helmet and like yank it back, and if you had your chin strap on you, it would pull your head back and make you lose like your balance or whatever. But if it's back here like this, your helmet will just go flying and that's that. They have this nice little loop right here to cover the buckle when it's on your uh, chin. Very nice mangane manganese steel helmet. And as you can tell, the brim is actually a separate piece. You can see one edge right here. And if you flip it over, another edge right here. So they made the shell and then just kind of put the seam or the brim onto it. So again, if something broke on this helmet, you could switch it out. If you lost your nape strap, you can replace it. It just comes off with four buttons. Sweatbands, you know, worn out. You just take them off, put a new one on. Chin strap's damaged. Uh, you just take off the chin strap. If the liner is damaged, you throw it away and you grab a new one. Now, if, on your end, it might seem like an abrupt stop to the video and then transition to this, but I have a good reason. I forgot to talk about a hat. So, this is the Jeep cap. You see it has a brim, it's made out of wool, it's elastic kind of wool, and yes, they did have that back then. Nice tag, it's old, very nice on, it's a very worn hat. These hats were made so they could be worn just by itself or underneath the helmet. Now, if you were to wear this cap, you would need to adjust the band to be a bit bigger. But just a nice hat for winter. So soldiers could wear something underneath their helmet. And this brim is very nice. Even just not wearing the helmet. I wear this hat a lot because, you know, it acts like a hat and it's warm. So now I, now I will come back when I have all my gear on and I will show you the various hats and what uniforms would be with them when they're worn. So let's get to it. All right, now I'm going to show you what the headwear looks like when wearing it with the proper uniform. Now, garrison caps could be worn with the combat uniform or the dress uniform. The combat uniform when you're just kind of like hanging around at camp and like behind the lines and you don't need the helmet. And these could also just be worn for dress occasions. But, as you can see, in the piping, you could go with this uniform made out of wool. And if you can tell the shape of it and how it looks, when I go compare it to the standard issue version, right here, see it's a bit of a, bit of a different shape. Got that little split in between here. And those are pretty much just the two kind of garrison caps you could have in the European theater. 
this one is just general issue and the other one's uh you is personal purchase so that is the garrison caps and now of course with the combat uniform i'll go over the garrison caps again when i get into dress uniform but the combat uniform was mostly seen with the m1 helmet now i just noticed this thing is not adjusted to my head it is adjusted for winter but either way you can still get the idea suspension liner keeps it above your head so if you get hit on the head it's not too bad it mostly absorbs the impact steel shell deflects um shrapnel and in very rare circumstances it can deflect some some uh, bullets if it hits like let's just say right here on this nice curved part it can most of well, some of the time deflect it but these are in no way bulletproof if you get here if you get hit here you're dead that's about that but the combat helmet with the combat uniform and the gears and caps with you know the combat uniform as well now I'm going to get into dress uniform and show you the garrison caps and the dress cap, uh, you know, with the dress uniform. So let me get to that. All right, now we can see I'm wearing the dress uniform, and you can see this is the dress uniform with the garrison cap. It um definitely is more of a dressier hat, but you know it could also just be worn as a combat u as in like the rear line camps, like I said, and. Let's see how it looks with the dress uniform. Now when I switch it to the uh, standard issue version. Nothing too much different. It's the same kind of overseas cap, the cap. But this one is definitely more of a... Well, this one is the standard issue one. Nothing too fancy with those. You've seen them before. And now we move on to the dress cap. See, very nice, very stylish dress cap. Fold that back. And right here is the cap. I'm pretty sure I have that on straight. Now, as you can see, definitely a much nicer cap to be wearing with this. Also, you know, it's a bit harder to transport, but I can see people transporting it in the bottom of their foot locker. A lot easier than the and then transport uh, transporting the the campaign hat during World War One. You could also probably fit this in your duffel bag too if you had room, but that's pretty much that. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any video ideas, please leave them down in the comments, and I will see you guys later.